John chapter 3. I'm going to read one verse. Actually, I'll first. Three teachings. That's what I read. I'll read the teachings after I get my shoe on. Anyway, John chapter 3, verse 7. It says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. As we all know, this is Jesus talking to Nicodemus. And I want to speak with you tonight on a saying that maybe you've heard. I'm going to ask you, have you heard it? It's a saying that goes like this. Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. Anybody ever heard that? If you've been in church any amount of time, you probably have heard that saying. I'll say it again. This is the title of the message. Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. I want to speak with you tonight on that subject about being born once, dying twice, born twice, and dying once. The first two points or the first two parts of that phrase, being born once and die twice, is speaking to the lost sinner. Is speaking to the lost sinner. The second part that says born twice, die once, is speaking to the saved sinner. Both are sinners, but the difference between me and a lost man is that I'm saved, they're lost. Same thing with you. If you're saved and you deal with a lost person, the only difference is basically that you're saved by God's marvelous grace and they're lost and needing to be saved. And so we want to get to the first part tonight, and that is born once. Born once is the first point. And it is talking to is about a physical birth, a physical birth. When it says born once, and you say, well, this ain't very biblical, is it? Because you took a phrase, and no, it's very biblical. That's a biblical phrase because it's based on Scripture, and we're going to look at what the Scripture says about it. That's just the title I gave to the message. Born once is the first point. Again, this is speaking to a lost man, a lost sinner. In fact, if you're saved, it was once talking to you. It was talking to me before I got saved because I, I was born once. There's only two humans who were never born. Can anybody name them? Only two humans that were never born. Yeah, Adam and Eve. I'm hoping someone in this church knows the answer to that question. Uh, only two people, and that was Adam and Eve. They were not born. God created them. If you turn over to Genesis, and I'm going to try to get this right this time. Genesis chapter 1, I tried to give this to you the other night, and I guess I did, but I kind of fumbled around with the pages, but I'll give it to you again. Uh, Genesis chapter 1. Uh, only Adam and Eve uh, were created in the image of God, because I've heard people say, well, I was created, and I think I've been guilty until I learned that, hey, I was not created in the image of God. It tells us in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, it says, And God said, Let us, talking about the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Genesis chapter 1, 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. In our image. Whose image? In God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. After our likeness, and let them... Talking about Adam and Eve have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So both Adam and Eve were created in the very image of God. Now every person after Adam and Eve was created or was uh, born different. Look over at Genesis chapter, uh, we'll look at one other thing first. Hold your place there. Go to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. Colossians 1 verse 15, as I just read, tells you about the first Adam. That would be Adam, correct? The first Adam would be Adam. That makes sense, doesn't it? And so, that's the first Adam. Colossians 1 verse chapter 1 verse 15 says, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? And that's talking about Jesus Christ, the second Adam. The second Adam. Um, uh, and the last Adam, by that way, is, is um, Jesus Christ. But we, as uh, descendants, are uh, our great, 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 great grandpa, Adam, back over in Genesis, or oh, back over in Genesis chapter 5, every person after Adam was different. They were different. In Genesis chapter 5 and verse 1 it says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, 
in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Now that he's restating what happened over in Genesis chapter 1 that we just read. And then verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness. I mean, he bore a son. And, and it was in his own likeness after his image. After whose? After Adam's image. And called his name Seth. You notice he didn't say after God's image. It was after Adam's image. So me and you are created not in the image of God, but in the image of Adam. In the um, image of Adam. And um, you have to realize that Adam was created after the image of God before there was sin. He didn't have any children until after there was sin. Um, they did not have any children in the Garden of Eden. It was not until after sin uh, uh, that they committed sin. They were cast out of the, or uh, put out of the garden. And then they died spiritually. And then they had children. And since then, every man has been created or born in the image of Adam. Now, talking about being born once, that's a physical birth, is what we're talking about. We have to go back to our roots, which is as far as we can go as Adam. Uh, there was no man before Adam. So therefore, we go back to the beginning, and we see that man had to be born physically except for Adam and Eve. But here we see that, um, uh, that Adam and his wife Eve had Seth, and he was born, and it was after Adam's and Eve's image. Every man is born a sinner in his father's image. Talking about Adam. In John 3, 6, turn over to John chapter 3, verse 6. John chapter 3, verse 6. Talks about a physical birth. Now, as we know the story here about um, Jesus talking with Nicodemus, let's, let's read down a couple of verses uh, even though you know the story, let's read it real quickly. It says, There was a man, in verse 1, chapter 3 of John, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Notice that, notice that phrase. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Still talking about the first part there being born once a physical birth, that we all must be born. In John chapter 3, verse 6, there again, that phrase, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. When me and Beth had children, you know, uh, we are flesh, and when they came out, you know what? They were flesh. They were born fleshly because that's what they are. They are born fleshly. This little child that we mentioned prayer about just a few minutes ago, Miss Jane did, it was born, maybe no matter how it comes out, it's still flesh. It's still flesh. That's, just, that's a born ones, born ones. In John chapter 1, verse 13. Turn over there. John chapter 1, and verse 13. Again, and verse 12. And it's a very familiar a passage, as we know. It says uh, in uh, verse 12, chapter 1, But as many as received Him, talking about who? Jesus Christ. To them, talking about those that received Him, gave He power to become the sons of God. Who, who are the sons of God? Those that have received Jesus Christ, even to them that believe on His name. So those that believe in Christ, those that receive Christ, are the children of God, the sons of God, which were born. Now we're going to hear how they were born. How were they born? Not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. 
that phrase there, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, that's all talking about a first birth. Talking about when we come into this world uh, from our mother's womb, that is a birth that it were born into this world fleshly from our mother's womb. In Psalms chapter 139, you don't have to turn there. David speaks of being born in his mother's womb and how great it is and so forth. David speaks great much in that chapter about how God knows him. But from his mother's womb, it says that God knew him. David was born just like me and you. And just like John here. Look over at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. First Corinthians, holy place there in John chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Turn there. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 47. Talking about being born once. In verse 47 says the first man is of the earth. Now who's the first man? Adam. That's the first Adam. The first man is of the earth. Earthly. Very plain. That means fleshly. He's born which he was created. The second man is the Lord from heaven. That's very plain. It tells you that. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. That's me and you. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, and that's what we have. Remember over in Genesis chapter 5, Seth was born in the image of who? Adam and Eve. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. It is true that one day we're going to be like him. That's what the Bible tells us. That's when we get a glorified body. We will receive a body. We will be like him. But right now we're in the image of our great, 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 great granddaddy Adam. And that's because he was earthly and therefore we've been born earthly. We're just like him. That which is flesh is flesh. Remember the rich man in hell? He was born but he still, he died, but he was born. Uh, what about the thief on the cross? He was born, was he not? He had to have a physical birth. He only had one, though. It says born once. And that's what happened to the rich man and the thief on the cross that, that de um, denied the Lord. They were born one time. Beware if you're only born once. That's very, very critical um, in, in this message. It's very critical in your life, most important. If you've only ever been born once, you got to be born twice. So that's the first point that we got to. Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. The second point. Let's go a little bit further in that phrase. We said born once is the first point. Die twice is the second part of that phrase. Die twice. That is talking about a physical death. If you are born once then you're in trouble. You will die twice. A man who is born only once will die twice. Again, this is speaking to the lost man. This part of this um, saying, which is biblical, if a person is born once and they die twice, dying twice is speaking to a lost person, a lost soul. A man who is born only once, if I have to repeat it, will die twice. Now, the first death that he will die is um, is um, in, in the body, the grave, uh, and the soul in hell. Uh, that's when he will, uh, when a person gets old, just like Miss Jones. She had cancer, and when she died, that was a physical death. But she was saved. She never dies again. We'll cover that in just a minute. But a lost man, like this rich man, well, he was, um, he he died, and when he died, his body went into the ground. His spirit went to God. He goes back to God, the Bible tells us. And his soul went to hell because he was lost. Now that's the first death that a lost person is going to go through. Born once, die twice. What about the thief on the cross? Well, the same thing goes for him. And anybody like either one of them that's never received Jesus Christ, they, their body, that thief, when he gave up, the, uh, when he gave, took his last breath on that cross, when they broke his legs, and he gasped for his last breath, and he died. As soon as he died, his spirit went back to God, and his soul went down to hell. And when they took him off that cross, and they buried him somewhere in the ground or a, 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 a tomb or something. They put him somewhere and his body went back to the dust that it came from. The Bible tells us that. That's the first death. 
And we have an appointment to die. The Bible tells us, turn over to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, tells us about that appointment. It don't make no difference if you're saved. It don't make no difference if you're lost. You've got an appointment with death. Now, I don't know when that appointment is. I know when we go to the doctor, they always give us an appointment card. You know, you're supposed to be here on, on such and such day at such and such time. Is that good with you? And we either say, yeah, you're that. Is that the way y'all get it when y'all go to the doctor? And so, therefore, you have a, an appointment. Boy, if you don't keep that appointment, they'll still send you a bill. Uh, that's the way it works. They, they want you to keep that appointment. Well, the Bible says we have an appointment to die. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, it says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die. Every man is appointed one time in life at least to die. But after this, the judgment. The first part there again tells us we're going to die. You can't break that appointment. You can't say, well, I'm not going to make it. I, I got some things to do this week. I, I know I'm supposed to be there on Friday, Lord, and I'm supposed to die on Friday, but I'm going to uh, have to uh, cancel that, maybe set that up some other time. The fact is we don't know when we're going to die. We can't change that appointment like we can a doctor. But God says, I have an appointment. God has a calendar on down. He says, this is when Miss Jones is going to die. This is when the thief on the Christ cross is going to die. This is when, when the rich man is going to die. This is when Miss Jane is going to die. This is when Beth's going to die. This is when the prince is going to die. Hey, we got a date on the calendar. And God says, I wrote your name in right there. At such and such time. And it ain't just around 12. It's at 12.04 and three seconds. And he can break it down further than that if he needs to. He knows exactly when you're going to die and give up the ghost. And it don't make no difference if you're saved or lost. We all have an appointment. But here we're talking about dying twice, the physical death, to a lost man. He has an appointment uh, to die. It cannot be broken and it cannot be delayed. Not only the first death, but then talking about the second death, the dying twice, the first death is the body and grave and the soul in hell. The second death is also talking about the body and grave and the soul and the lake of fire. The body and grave and the soul and the lake of fire. In that same verse, it tells us in Hebrews 9.27, not only do we have an appointment to die, but after this, the judgment. After this, the judgment. So we have an appointment to die. We have an appointment to be judged. That's a fact. Turn over to Revelation chapter 20, and we'll look at the second death. Revelation chapter 20, in verse 11. Revelation 20, in verse 11. Talking about born once, dying twice. This is talking to the lost man. This is where you don't want to be. You do not want to die twice, that's for sure. You do not want to be, die twice. Because it says on the second death, this is the problem. This is where you run into a real problem that you don't want to be in. On the second death, in verse 11, Revelation 20, it says, John said, And I saw a great white throne. This is where you don't want to be. And at least on the wrong side. And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their words. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their words. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This second death is not what you want to go through, my friend. It is not a death that you want to experience because that rich man, even though he's been burning in hell for some 2,000 years, that thief on the cross that rejected Jesus Christ, that hung on a cross before, beside him, who shed his blood, who gave his life, who went to the very depths of hell for him, who didn't have to go, but he did reject Christ. That thief, that rich man, and every person since then has been in, a, in, in hell burning for all eternity. But there's coming today 
There's coming a day at the great white throne judgment that it explains here that uh, John said, I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it. You know, that ain't, uh, that ain't uh, Muhammad, that ain't Buddha, that ain't Jim Jones, but that's none other than God Almighty, Jesus Christ in the flesh is going to sit on that throne and he is going to judge them by his book, by the book of life. And it says that those that were dead um, uh, their bodies are going to be raised. Death and hell is going to give up uh, their souls and they're going to take on their bodies again. And they're going to become alive uh, as far as a physical body. And they're going to stand before God and that's where they're going to, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that He is Lord. And they're going to be alive in a, a, a body at least for a little time. But then, we see there's no escape. It says that they're going to be thrown in a lake of fire. A lake of fire. That's what it says in verse 14 and 15. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All those people that's been burning, they might think, hey, man, we got some hope. Man, we got out of this place. Woo! Man, we're going to take a body and, man, maybe we're going to do something different now. But no. No. They're not going to do anything different. It says there's no escape. They're going back to something even worse than what they came from. A lake of fire. If you can imagine, it's going to be a lake of fire. Then they have no hope. They have no hope. Turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, in verse 13. It says those same people that have no escape from the lake of fire because their names is not written in the Lamb's book of life. The Bible tells us that they're not going to go to hell because they was a drunkard. They're not going to go to hell because they was a sodomite. They're not going to go to hell because they was a, a liar. They're not going to go to hell because they rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior, God's Son. That's why they're going to hell. But it says right here, they not only do they have no escape, but they have no hope. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, it says, But I would, Paul said to the church here, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, uh, that's to say, that ye sorrow not. Don't sorrow for them people even as others which have no hope. All those people that aren't saved, those people who have never trusted Christ, the Bible says they have no hope. They have no hope. Look over at John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Again, talking about no hope. I thank God that we are saved and that um, the, the saved um, uh, believer, the child of God has hope. We don't have to worry about escaping a lake of fire because we're never going. We have the best escape, and that's Jesus Christ. He's already paid the debt for us. John chapter 5, verse 27. John chapter 5, verse 27. It says, And hath given him authority. Talking about Jesus Christ. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Talking about Jesus. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. God, God, one day, Jesus is going to call up the dead. He's going to call them up. And they're going to be judged. They have no hope. They're going to be cast into a lake of fire. Now, we've seen the first part of this phrase, born once, die twice. I hope you see that, that that's not something you want to go through. You don't want to be just born once and die twice. That's, that's terrible. That's, that, that, that'll haunt you for your all eternity. Your soul will go through a lake of fire and you have no escape and you have no hope. So a person that's only born once, they will die twice. But let's go a little bit further. And the next phrase goes born twice, die once. We're going to cover the first part of that, born twice. Now that's what we want to do. That's what you want to experience, and, and that is being born twice. That is talking about a physical and a spiritual birth. A physical and a spiritual birth. And that is speaking to the saved sinner. That's me. I got saved at six years old. And that's speaking to me. If you got saved and you're born again, then you know what? It's talking to you. That you've been born twice. In John chapter 3, John chapter 3, verses 3 through 7, we read those verses. And if you don't mind, we're going to read them again. It ain't going to certainly hurt us. And verses 3 through 7, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, talking about Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said it unto thee, ye must be born again. Here we see the kingdom of God is spiritual. The kingdom of God is spiritual there in those verses. In uh, verse 3, where it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Uh, talking about a spiritual kingdom. Uh, in Romans 14, 7. Romans 14, 7. It tells us, and I'm turning there. I'm going to read it when I get there. Romans 14, 7. Uh, if I got the verse right, I hope I do. No, I don't. Give me half a second and I'll find it. Or did I turn to the wrong place? I think this one, fourteen seven. I still don't think that's right. But anyway, I thought it was right, but I guess I'm wrong. It is not right. Well, we'll keep going. But I'll get that verse for you. I thought sure it was fourteen seven. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let me turn over to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It's, it's Romans 14, 17, because I got it marked over there. Romans 14, 17, I'm sorry. In fact, that's what I got on my notes. <laughs> Matthew, or, or is that wrong again still? Is that what we already said? That is what I said. Forget what I said about Romans. <laughs> Maybe it's 4 7. <laughs> we'll try that. Now, anyway, just don't worry about it. I'll give it to you later. But anyway, uh, it, it's, uh, the, you have to take the word for it, I'll give you the verse. But the fact is, the kingdom of God is spiritual. That's what it says it's righteousness. It's joy and peace. Now, joy and peace and righteousness is not something that you can touch. You, you say, well, I've seen people with joy. Well, you never touch joy. You can't touch joy. It's something uh, uh, in that verse that I'm trying to think of or find uh, was it's talking about it's, it's, it's not uh, uh, that which is earthly. It's not something that you can put your hand on. It's not an earthly kingdom. Now, the Jews were looking for Jesus to come back and set up an earthly kingdom. But Jesus did uh, not do that. He was talking about here, talking about a spiritual kingdom. The kingdom of God is when Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit of God, comes and lives within you. That's the kingdom of God. It's spiritual. Over, I'm talking about the kingdom of earth and heaven is physical. That's during the millennial. That's when uh, the Lord will come back for a thousand years and set up His kingdom physically on this earth. They're two different things. A lot of people get them confused, but they're different. John chapter 3, again in verse 3, it says, Jesus answered and said to him, But verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. A man, a lost man, cannot see spiritually the kingdom of God because he is spiritually dead. Now that should be self-explanatory, but if it's not, turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 in verse 18. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18 says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. To a lost man, they can't see uh, what you're talking about. You can try to explain to them. If you're witnessing to somebody, you try to tell them well, what Christ has done for you. Many of them look at you like you're stupid because they don't see what the word you're talking about. They can't see because uh, they want something like a sign, like the Jews. Well, show us a sign, Lord. What kind of signs and wonders and miracles can you do? Well, we're talking about something that's spiritual. But they can't see it. They can't see it. Over in um, John chapter 3, 5, it says uh, that a lost man cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And that's because he's spiritually dead. A person has to be born twice, not just once. We've talked about the physical birth. We're going to talk about it just a second again. But in John 3, 5, it says, hey, Jesus said again, a man cannot even enter the kingdom of God. Not only can he not see it, but he can't enter into it because he is 
spiritually dead. In John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, again, we read those verses. And it says, I can read them again. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on His name, which were born, not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. A person has to be born of God to see and to enter into the kingdom of God spiritually. A physical birth. In verse 5 of John chapter 3 it says, Except a man be born of water. Again, I've heard preachers say, well, this is talking about the Word of God. And I guess you can make spiritual application because the water represents the Word of God many times in Scripture. But here, I personally don't believe it's talking about the Word of God because if you look at it in its context, when Jesus says in verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus took him literally and was thinking, well, how can a man be born when he is old? Like Mr. Jack would say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 85 years old. How can I be born again? I, I, I'm an old man. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He was kind of being sarcastic, saying, well, that's impossible, Lord. There's no way I could be born again. I can't go back into my mother's womb and be born. That would be impossible physically. And it's right. But Jesus is saying, except the man be born of water, he's got to be a, have a first birth like all men. In John chapter 3, verse 6, it tells us uh, in the second part, of uh, the first part of that verse, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Talk about a physical birth. But then Jesus went on to explain the spiritual birth, the being born twice that we're talking about. It says in verse 5 again, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, there's the first birth, and, and is a conjunction that ties these two phrases together. It's one thing, you got to be born once in your mother's womb that's surrounded by water, and water breaks. That's the context. Is being talking about a mother's womb in verse four, not the word of God, but it's talking about a being born physically and of the spirit. He's got to be born twice. Born twice. That's what Jesus says in verse six again. It says that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. The first birth. The second one is that which is born of the spirit is spirit. In verse 8, it describes the spiritual birth. The wind. Now, the wind does uh, represent the Holy Spirit. The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This describes the working of the Holy Spirit in a lost man's soul as he deals with that person, whether he's sitting in his house, or whether he's sitting on the porch, or whether he's sitting in a, in a chair at church, or whether he's sitting in a car, or wherever he's at, or a prison cell. He's dealing with his heart and the Holy Spirit. He can't tell where he comes and whether he's going, it says. And he don't know what's happening. He don't know about anything. All he knows is when that person except Christ that day, like Miss Jones in a hospital bed, lying there, she accepted Christ. We couldn't see the Holy Spirit come. We couldn't see him go. We didn't see it in her, but we could see the expression. We could see the expression on her face. And we heard her confessing with her lips. As it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we confess him, she confessed him. Therefore we see the being born twice. Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. The last part is dying once. It's a physical death. It's a physical death. This is speaking to the saved person. It is appointed once again for man to die, as we looked at in Hebrews 9 and 27. A man who is born twice will die once. And maybe not at all, to be honest with you. Because there is the possibility that the Lord could come back at any moment, praise God, and we would just be taken out and we're not going to die at all of physical death. Now that would be great. Look over at 2 Samuel chapter 14 in verse 14. 2 Samuel chapter 14 in verse 14. It says... For we must needs die. Hmm. 
It sounds like an appointment to die again, isn't it? And our water spill on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither doth God respect any person. Yet doth he devise means that his banished be not expelled from him. Here's talking about we're just like water. Water go out, dump that humidifier in here. I went outside before church and dumped it out there on those water. On the um on the uh, plants out there. You know, if I had tried to gather that water after I poured it out, it wouldn't have happened. In 2 Samuel 14, 14. It wouldn't have happened. When Amy spilled the bucket a few weeks back on the carpet out here, boy, you couldn't, you couldn't get it up either then. It's gone. It's soaked up. We return to the dust, the Bible tells us, when we die. But in 2 Samuel 14, 14, it says, which cannot be gathered up again when a, when a person dies. Neither does God respect any person. He does it when it comes to death. We all go back to the dust. And He does respect people in other areas. We know that in Scripture. Look over at Psalms 89. In Psalms chapter 89. Psalms 89, verse 48. Again we see, it says, What man is he that liveth? and shall not see death. What man is he that liveth and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? See look. We as Christians, if the Lord t tarries, we will see death. But he may come back at any moment. And if he comes back, then we'll be raptured out. Praise God. In Ecclesiastes 12, 7, you don't have to turn there, it says, Then shall the dust return to the earth, as it was, talking about our body. And the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Our body is made up of body, soul, and spirit. Our body is going to return back to the ground, to dust. Our spirit that God gave it to us is going to return to Him. Our soul, for the saved, are going to go to heaven. But for the, saved, but the, but, but for the soul that rejected Christ, He'll die and go to hell. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 up to 18. Turn there, if you will, to the last place. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. Now, we read these verses many times. I'm not going to read them again. But we, as I spoke many weeks on the rapture, the same man may not die, but he may be translated at the rapture. Well, that would be a great day. Lord, if you come back tonight, our bodies won't go to the grave. Or at least we won't. We won't die. Now, our body will die. But we ourselves, our soul, will go straight on to heaven. Well, our bodies will. I'm sorry. I got that wrong. <laughs> our bodies will go with us. Because we'll get a glorified body. We'll get a glorified body at the rapture. So we've seen that a man who is born twice will die once. Make not die alone. If you're saved, then you have been born twice. That means that you was born from your mother the first time, then you was born again. Mr. Jack gives a testimony that he got saved at 12 or 13. 13. Therefore, he was born again when he was 13 years old. I got born again when I was 6 years old. Beth got born again when she was 8 years old. So forth. If you're born twice, you'll die once if you're saved. But don't be like the first part of this phrase, born once. That means you've never been born again. That means you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. And the fact is you'll die twice. If, you die, if you're born once and you die, you will die again. But you'll die into a lake of fire where there's no escape and there's no hope. Never, ever to return. So in conclusion, I read you the verse that Jesus said in John 3, 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And that's what Jesus says to you. If you have only been born once, then you're going to die twice. But there's an escape. God had a plan. His plan was this. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. I encourage you to be saved. I encourage you to be born twice, to be born again, to accept Christ as your Savior who died on Calvary for your sins and shed His blood and went to hell for you so you don't have to die that second death and go to a lake of fire. 
You don't have to go there. Please don't. God says you must be born again. You can't get there through the baptistry. You can't get there through the altar plate. You can't get there through the church house. But you can get there through Jesus. And that's the only way. Ye must be born again. My dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for thy precious word. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I've been born again. I thank you, Lord, that you came into my heart and saved me from my dirty, rotten soul. I thank you, Lord, that you washed me white as snow. Thank you, Lord, I'm wearing your clothes of righteousness tonight. When God looks at me, he sees your righteousness, not my righteousness, because there is filthy rags. I thank you, God, for going to hell for me. I pray to the Lord that there's others out here that may hear um, the Lord the gospel. I pray to God that you help them, the Lord, to be born again. Help them, the Lord, before it's eternally too late. And they die that second death. And Lord, there's no escape and there's no return. I pray to God that you help them, convict them of their sins. Help them to see the truth, the Lord, before it's eternally too late. Lord, we just pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name because you're worthy. Amen and amen.